Welcome, welcome back to my channel. This is Rashid. Uh, we we do another video today, and today's video is going to be the last video on this uh, Clark distribution network. Yes. So, uh, I divided into four segments: uh, off-chip crystal oscillator and on-chip uh, PLL and divider. Something. Um, I think I did one video. Then I did. Uh, local clock tree uh, synthesis or clock tree synthesis or HD synthesis from a partition pin to each flag within the partition right that those were I think those were two videos and today is the last one a last topic hopefully I can finish in one video and that is the global component of the clock distribution and I mentioned these two come in the area of physical design they are done and executed and verified and everything by physical design people. This is on um, um, board level. And this is a separate team with expertise in PLL dividers, analog mixing all that. Okay. This picture, is this the picture? Okay. Yeah, let's start with this picture actually. I was thinking about this. If you remember, this was the picture I showed in the first video of clock tree synthesis or H tree synthesis. And at that time we didn't talk about the H tree or clock tree. But all I was saying that from this point when clock comes into it and I just say okay just assume it comes in. Then you have to connect it to each flop. Right? Um, you can't just put long just wires for transition times for making sure you have a nice clock um, waveform then you need to put uh, regular buffers so you will have wire segments you have uh, cell segments right and after that I said okay each flip-flop endpoint uh, needs to be balanced to certain latency you need to understand how much is a reasonable latency um, and then you can be aggressive on that but sometimes tool may not meet those two aggressive goals so try to be realistic here and you, people already people do some sort of simulation some idea of okay how much um, length will or how much distance will involve and roughly how much is a good kind of delay how much a buffer can drive and what will be the delay of the buffer what will be the um, delay of a wire segment if it's on metal 4, metal 5, metal 6, metal 7 and typically clocks are majority of the time they are routed on higher metals because they have less resistance even though they have higher capacitance. Uh, so those are some of the considerations you have to do. And the key thing I was I, I was trying to focus on um, on these some of these parts how global skew local skew is, is important. Okay. The same concepts apply uh, for the global segment. Okay, global segment is you have a clock coming from divider A, B, C, and we will just again for simplification purpose, we'll just take A. So you need to take A and need to go here, need to go this consume in this partition, but then it needs to be consumed this partition. For that, it has to go through this partition which is a different case. I mean, here is just, well, actually in this case is going through partition one. This is itself a partition. <laughs> Meaning there are local flops, but some of these clocks are just like, a clock pin goes from here to here without being consumed. Here is, is what? Feed through path. Right? So it's a clock feed through path, but clock is go through and then clock go through this one. Right? And same thing with everyone. What the next picture I have? Actually, let's go back. I think this picture is better. So, so we start when, let's say, a clock CGU from the CGU, a pin A, our one gigahertz clock coming out. This one. Okay. Then this, yeah, this need, need to go to here. This needs to go to this one, consume here. But at the same time, this also needs to go here. And this needs to go here. Then this needs to go here. Did we cover everything? Yes, I think so. And also, and then it will be consumed inside this one too. 
So you need to define a point where it kind of you can uh, from that point you can start a synth clock to synthesis for these flops. So now think of instead of and in previous example I was thinking of okay, all these flip flops. You think of them, right? You need to balance to this. For example, I have created seven flip flops. But now you need to think of all those n nodes in this case. In these cases, those were flip flop clock pins. But in this case, those are partition pins. Like this is a typical way of um, mentioning the name of a pin on a sub block. When you're sitting at the top level, your partition zero is the instance, and then slash is a hierarchy operator, and then it's a mean it's pin a. So pin A is getting mean it. I should have called it maybe clock A. Oops, it's too big. Oh, <laughs> okay, clock A, clock A. So each one has the clock A, or let's say it's A. It's okay. I don't know what's happening. Uh, so each of the partition has that pin so from cju we need to send to each one of them so instead of flop endpoints now we have hierarchical pins or endpoints so the same philosophy that we had that we need to balance from here to each one of them same philosophy here now we need to balance from here to each one of them so from here to each one of them you need to balance or you need to say from this this clock let's say it's the same thing clock a and then each one has clock a, a. i'm just calling it a uh, so that i can do it quickly so from this point to each one of them we need to build some sort of tree so that the number of stages cells and wire segments are very identical and each one the latency that you see here should be the same latency you see here but also number of stages should be same because something maybe I will talk later on the D rate or the point of divergence of the clock. Those the differences uh, between the, the different segments, they can be problem. Okay. But again, for now, just keep it simple. We keep it simple and just think of that. Okay. Just like the other local clock systems, somebody needs to build this sort of tree. Now it could be this one. This is very kind of, doesn't look like a much edge, but you can have a, basically just like tool creates an edge you come here you create segments here you have here and then you say each node i will connect a partition sorry i don't know if i so you can come here you can have and then you can have partitions connected here but the thing is now this is done at the top level you somebody sitting at the top level so you what you see is each block of this one this is not a block that you're taking through a placement synthesis and clock tree synthesis and routing and all that so this whole design we're not taking that remember i said an example we are building each block separately and then what we will do is we will just bring them integrate them together in a in a place and route tool but we're not doing a um, standard clock tree synthesis or gate level synthesis and all those flows so our top level design is a big one it's not made for that it's just we're not reading all the very log inside each because otherwise it, it's too much too big it will take too long too many problems issues and everything the whole point of dividing it into smaller blocks was so that we can handle each block separately is a is a smaller design we can quickly turn around finish it close it but it definitely brings the challenges that some of the things now we need to do at the top level how to create those and pass those to those blocks that's really the the challenge here so how you implement that ultimately your top level person or floor plan person needs to implement that um, herself or himself tool is not going to create a, a standard cts here so you need to do that cts yourself Okay, how you do to do it? Okay, two things are important. First, you don't have, you're not doing it in a standard custom layout way. Like people who do analog design, they just drag this transistor, that transistor, and they can just literally create the whole layout themselves. You are doing a little bit between them. 
you are using the power of the tool whatever you can use and help it wherever you can help so that overall structure that you use is very customized you, you know whatever <clears throat> it, it's reproduced okay two things it's it's the latency targets are hit uh class queues are minimum no it's as you're talking about few like six pins you're not talking about um and tens of thousands of flip-flop clock pins or hundreds of thousands of flip-flop clock pins. Are you talking here? It's just, just six. Why they would not? Okay. Six or five or ten or maybe 20 partitions, right? Um, so it's relatively easier to build that. Yes, it will take a little bit more effort. Somebody need to draw these. Somebody need to know what happens is typically it's done is uh, the floor plan person is going to use uh, let's say uh, insert buffer type command or create cell like some of these tickle commands in different tools they can give you okay when you want to create an instant of a particular buffer from the sensor library you can use a command when now then when you want you can create a net and then you can connect this net to the input pin of this Mm, uh, pin of this cell and call that net you can create that is like a create net i think there's a command connect net type i'm forgetting thing but, but you can connect net and connect from this pin to another pin so so there is a custom way that using some of the tickle constructs you can create a logical connection you can build this yourself so i mean building means you need to create this there is no netlist for this right so you need to add a cell uh, yeah this is it so you create i need to add a cell uh, create cell and then you say okay create a logical connection there once you have logical connection, let's say you create this, we'll talk about these metals in a minute. So through logically, you kind of connected these things. Then you say, okay, on this net that I created, put a metal five strap from this to this. Its length is this, its width is this. But the typically, I, I don't think I did that. So this buffer output is maybe metal, on metal two. This is metal five. So if you have a metal two, you need to go through via and there will be metal three, right? From metal three, you, somebody needs to have a via to go to metal four. Then need a via to have go to metal five. And this is our this metal. So this structure all the way to metal two you can tell so you, what you can tell the tool okay put this metal here and then connect this so tool can do issue route type you tool will actually connect all create all these so using some of those tickle constructs constructs so you can create cell create bigger matters and let the tool do the final small connection because if you start doing tickling everything it can be a lot you want to automate this and the beauty of those tickle construct is once you have done it and you you putting them in a file you can always just create it just source that file inside the tool uh, inside ic compiler uh, for example or fusion compiler and once tool runs everything it will just build it so that's the way the power of automation comes in but the other uh, other reason why we want to do it besides making it easier next time is because we might there might be some changes here and there as the design progresses as we go through the chip some new requirement comes in so using this automation we don't have okay we did so much hard work put every via here and now we have to remove this we have to get it so here what you have to do is you just driving the major thing if you want to add more buffers just you know just add more lines or comment out some lines so it gives you a um, good possibility to kind of uh, upgrade things as well some people also create so once they have a netlist they can create a small design themselves kind of run a static timing analysis on it do a drc violations and all that there's different ways that you can 
verify that your timing is good because you don't have a, a fusion compiler clock trace tool that's going to tell you where what is the latency what is the skew and some other thing how is the uh, other layout side drc and other things some of those things you might have to it, it really there could there could be a lot of ways you can do it but the high level point that i'm trying to make here this is a more custom way but automation is key here now question is one is once this is built what happens the top level owner doesn't have a partition the only magic happens within these partitions and you bring them together so i really the custom structure that you created here you want to give it to each block whatever if you created a custom structure here you want to give that portion to that party par one owner the one going to this one you want to give to par four owner so that those guys put them there so that when they come to you they are already part of that the other approach is you take everybody with the partition and then you put on a job but at the top this those structure but the problem is when partition four is already placed or routed lot of metals will already be used cell will be placed and you know maybe they put a multiplexer here where you were expecting um, a cell place there you don't want to compromise on the clock clock is the first priority so typically a better approach is you design a where you want a clock cell and eventually from that design you can create some tickle you you it's called pushing those uh cells and metals down it means when this guy starts with uh, her synthesis and then place a route run uh, she will have a tickle file which has all those metal routes cells added already part of as a physical information already there so it's like somebody starting this partition already has some initial data that need to be part of this partition and the good thing is that uh, once that person puts all that in the new cells or any further placement or any routing happens those if properly don't touched those things will not be moved so your clock structure will stay in intact uh, because once it, it places it cannot place another cell over it because we will talk about placements you know each one has a unique legal location once it's placed legally all right so i think that's uh, the, the point here was the simple thing you put these ones and you just let the two route i was talking about some routing uh, tracks and all that but there's no need for that okay yes i think this is what i i, I already talked about that eventually clock will be routed and anything here will be pushed we talk about automation pushing them down i think that's it all right hopefully i explain okay and you got the concept of global clock again i can i can talk and talk and talk but the uh, the full learning is when you actually do it but the whole point of this is you get some higher level understanding of it so um, the overall kind of picture the big picture is clear to you and hopefully i'm, I'm able to make the bigger picture clear for you thank you so much